Sirhan Sirhan claims to have no memory of shooting Robert Kennedy. Some experts say his amnesia is proof he was hypnotized to kill. Scientists are racing to discover a magic memory pill. Would you want a photographic memory? Before you answer, meet a man who couldn't forget. A rape victim points out her attacker. That's him. And this man is convicted. But is he a rapist or a victim of memory? Next. June 5, 1968. Everyone remembers the assassination of Robert Kennedy. Everyone except his convicted killer, Sirhan Sirhan. From the moment Sirhan was caught with the smoking gun to this day as he serves a life sentence in a California prison, Sirhan Sirhan claims to have no memory of killing Bobby Kennedy. In what appeared to be an open and shut case, Sirhan's lawyers never contested his guilt. They merely sought to prove him insane, incapable of planning the assassination. But the jury convicted Sirhan of first degree premeditated murder. They concluded he was a politically motivated assassin a lone gunman who was faking his amnesia to avoid punishment. But some experts investigating the assassination believe Sirhan's amnesia is genuine. They offer a highly controversial theory for the cause of Sirhan's lack of memory. Philip Melanson has spent the past three decades studying the assassination of Robert Kennedy. As director of the RFK Assassination Archives at the University of Massachusetts, Melanson was instrumental in uncovering information that was never presented at Sirhan's trial. That information led him to believe that Sirhan's amnesia may be the result of being hypnotized and instructed to kill. Sirhan's lack of memory for the murder of Robert Kennedy was genuine, and it was established by both the defense and the prosecution before the trial. Sirhan himself badly wanted to remember what had happened. After all, he was caught with a smoking gun, so he wanted very badly to remember, and he worked hard at it, but he was still unable to come up with any motive or any memory of the crime. Sirhan remembers the events just prior to the shooting and just after his capture, but claims to have a lapse in memory during the actual shooting. Do you remember drinking coffee? I remember being around the coffee. You don't remember anything at all after that? What do you remember? When you got back and after you had some coffee? Yeah. I was choking like a son of a bitch. Choking? I was choking. Choking on what? The, the, the grandma... <coughs> the, the grandma throat. Oh, you mean after the shooting? Yeah. I see. Psychiatrists for both the defense and prosecution testified that Sirhan did have amnesia for the assassination. But to this day, no psychiatrist has found any evidence of psychosis in Sirhan, which scientists consider another possible cause of amnesia. Melanson became convinced that Sirhan's lack of memory is the result of being hypnotized and programmed to kill. After 15 years of analyzing the evidence and interviewing experts and witnesses, the only logical conclusion in this case, for my mind, is that Sirhan Sirhan was a programmed assassin, programmed to show up shooting at Robert Kennedy, and programmed not to remember. Is the programmed assassination theory merely the plot of a Hollywood movie? Or is it really possible to hypnotize someone to kill? Dr. Herbert Spiegel is one of the world's leading experts on hypnosis. He has taught hypnosis at the Columbia University Medical School for over 20 years and is the inventor of the standardized test for measuring a subject's hypnotizability. 
He believes there is circumstantial evidence that suggests Sirhan Sirhan was hypnotized to kill. The total and complete amnesia that Sirhan demonstrated uh, from the very beginning to this very day suggests strongly that he was A, highly hypnotizable, and B, uh, programmed uh, to perform that act. Okay. Uh, to demonstrate how person. easy it is to instruct someone under hypnosis, we asked Henry, the doorman at Dr. Spiegel's building, to volunteer. First, Dr. Spiegel tests Henry for his hypnotizability. As you concentrate on the standardized test measures hypnotizability on a scale of zero to five, zero being the least hypnotizable and five being the most. 50% of the population falls into the mid-range of hypnotizability, somewhere between two to three on the scale. Henry tests as a three. Look toward me. In Dr. Spiegel's expert hands, Henry is now under hypnosis. At our request, Dr. Spiegel gives Henry an instruction to comply with after he's out of his trance. Something called a post-hypnotic suggestion or instruction. Now I'm going to give you the instruction to come out of the formal hypnosis. But before I do, I want to give you these instructions. When we're talking after the hypnosis, when I take my glasses on and put them on, you are going to loosen your tie. Now I'm going to give you the instructions to come out of the hypnosis. Three, get ready. Two, with your eyelids closed, roll up your eyes. And one, let your eyes open slowly. Then when your eyes are back in focus, make a fist. Open your fist. Let it float down, and that's the end of the exercise. How do you feel? Feeling good. Is, uh, Dr. Spiegel engages Henry in conversation before activating the post-hypnotic instruction, very, uh, very relaxing. putting on his glasses to signal Henry to loosen his tie. It's a great way to, to just do the self-hypnosis this way, and you get yourself more, and you can give yourself instruction to, to uh, just relax. Yeah. Amazingly. Henry complies with Dr. Spiegel's instructions. What's, what's happening there? Huh? A little hot. What's that? A little hot. But oh. even more amazingly, Henry doesn't know why. why why'd you do that? Huh? It's hot. Like, it's hot. Uh -huh. hot. When okay. told that he loosened his tie because he was instructed to do so under hypnosis, he couldn't believe it. To loosen your tie. We have to see it. <laughs> oh, we really have to see it. When I take my glasses on and put them on, you are going to loosen your tie. I'm going to give you instructions to come to But even process. after watching the tape... I just saw my hand coming up. <laughs> wow. Henry still could not remember receiving the post-hypnotic instruction. Do you remember it now? Uh, no. You do, still don't remember that? Henry's amnesia is one symptom of what Dr. Spiegel calls the compulsive triad. Uh, it was hot. Yeah. Now, there's the compulsive triad. He has an amnesia to the signal, a compulsive need to comply, and a rationalization it was hot. The combination of compulsive compliance, rationalization, and amnesia is consistent with acts committed under post-hypnotic instruction. Dr. Spiegel argues that Sirhan Sirhan appears to exhibit the same symptoms. He had an amnesia to the instructions to uh, pull, the, pull the trigger. He had a compulsive need to do it because of the instructions to do it. And his rationalization was, if they said I did it, then I guess it's because Kennedy is pro-Israel. But those were the rationalizations that he offered 